Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Versailles High School, where tonight, in week one of the Ohio High School football season, the Versailles Tigers welcome in the Salina Bulldogs. Good evening, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Scott Mag and our entire WSN crew. And Scott, week one of the high school football season, we got a WBL and a MAC matchup. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a heck of a game. And, you know, it's kind of like when you get a um, this teams both they were working all summer and yeah. you, it's, you, got, you have a new, brand new car and you want to try to figure out everything you have. <laughs> right. You know, you want to test the new navigation system and all this. I'm, <laughs> you've been working on it and you're like, hey, I want to try this out. So it's, it's week one is always like trying to figure out what piece of the of your new car that you got that's going to work yeah what's your identity is yeah, yeah right. absolutely tonight's presenting sponsor is the people's bank we are invested in the communities we serve you your bank your way people's bank so salina will kick off for sales elects to receive first and we are here at hb whole field a beautiful facility on a beautiful night scott you know humidity a nice breeze you couldn't get a better night for high school yeah, football especially starting uh august 18th <laughs> right normally it's 95 degrees and they have to call timeouts to get uh, <laughs> water and stuff right. for these kids and you know what a great night for football absolutely so we are just about underway here There's the whistle. And ladies and gentlemen, we are underway for week one in Ohio high school football. Versailles will bring it up from the 10. They'll go around to the right side. He's got a hole and he's got some room. He makes two people miss. An elusive run by number 17, Michael Osborne, the quarterback on the team. She's a do-it-all player right there. Yeah, absolutely. He made the kicker miss there. He made a little side shuffle and got bass and got himself an extra 10, 12 yards there. What a great... Great move. I, I, I was kind of questioning him in his decision to uh, catch that right at the goal line. I'm thinking, ah, I don't know if I'd have done that, but obviously he's smarter than I am. A little juiced up for week yeah. one, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Michael Osborne, number 17, the 5'11", 185-pound senior. He'll be leading the Tigers out on their first offensive possession tonight. They've got two to the left, one to the right. They've got a man in the slot, and they've got one in the single set formation. Osborne will keep it himself. He'll run right up the middle. Gets a nice gain of about seven yards on a nice first down play for the Tigers. Yeah, nice tackle by Merlin there, the, the defensive lineman that go chase him down nine yards down the field. So uh, great blocking by the big guys up front, but Merlin comes and runs him down. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Wabash Mutual Telephone Company. That's first and ten on the scoreboard. Yes, it does. Yeah. Must have got a ten-yard gain there. Yeah. I, I thought it was like a seven or eight-yard gain there. Yeah. Ross Francis up the middle there, a little uh, fullback up to the 49-yard line. And obviously we see that Versailles is going to run the ball yeah. probably heavy tonight. Last year their offensive average was 26.1 uh, points a game, and uh, they, they ran for 28 touchdowns last year, Scott, so it's a huge part of their offense. Uh, yeah, but, you know, everyone, it's all the flashy spread stuff, but, you know, it's all trying to get everybody spread out and uh, try to get you in, in situations where they can run the quarterback and the, and the running back. So there's Osborne. He's going to keep himself. He'll go left side, and he's taken down for not much of a gain, if any at all. Nice job by number 11 for the Bulldogs. That's John Lutz, the 6'1 junior. Defensive back uh, coming from like looked like a linebacker monster position there. Come up and set the edge. Didn't let the quarterback get around the outside. What a heck of a play from the uh, defensive back there. So 10.32 to go here on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. It's all knotted up at zero. First possession of the year for the Versailles Tigers. Nice crowd on hand tonight. A lot of orange and black in the home stands. And you look across and in the green and white of Salina. So huge crowd on hand for tonight's opening matchup. Osborne looks to throw. He's going to roll back. He's going to roll to the right side. He throws deep down the right side. He's got a man out there. And they've got a reception. A beautiful catch. Number one. Now number four is uh, Excuse Lane me, Number four, yeah. you're right. Lane Bergman, 5'10", senior, with the catch. Yeah. He threw that, Osborne threw that off about his back foot for about 45 yards there in the air, and he just kind of threw it to the spot, and, and Bergman just ran it down. That was a heck of a play by Osborne. Yeah, there was a lot of coverage in the backfield yeah, right. there, and he just he went to the ball, so a nice job sure by that young man. He just kind of threw it and let, <laughs> let Bergman go run it down. Yeah. So obviously, they've uh, worked on that a time or two. So we've got a timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth with 10.06 to go. You're watching High School Football on WOSN.
Welcome back to Versailles High School. We're with 9.46 to go. We're all not at zero, but Versailles is knocking on the door on a big reception by the Tigers. Yeah, that was uh, quite a play there. That's a, I think number 58 for Solana was hurt, a little shaken up, but it, uh, Jackson Morgan, but I think he ran off under, under his own power. Osborne's going to hand the ball off right up the middle for a gain of about two yards. That's number 29, Ross Francis. He'll be the primary ball carrier for the Tigers tonight. The 5'9", 108-pound junior bounces through the interior of that line and picks up about two yards, and will go second and four from the three-yard line. Well, second and goal. Excuse me, second and three. Yeah. They're, well, they're going to say it's yeah. They're going to say they can pick up a first down at the goal line. I'm assuming with second and three from three. I don't think so. I think it's second <laughs> yeah. and goal, but they just put that on. The there. Second and three. I, yeah. I'm confused by the scoreboard. Yeah. <laughs> let's see if they let's see if they maybe trying to get Osborne on the edge here. Maybe off to that uh, strong side. Got everybody packed up in the middle. Osborne's going to keep there himself. He's going to run to the left side. He's got a hole. Takes it towards the end zone. And he is in for a Tiger touchdown. So with 8.42 to go, Michael Osborne, the senior quarterback, leads the team down the field. And they score a touchdown. They take the early 6-0 lead. Yeah, this, it just kind of looked like they were trying to get him on the outside. They had everybody bunched up inside. And that, that, wide, that strong side was wide open there for Osborne. And... You know, he's too good to give him open space to make people miss and get in there. The senior kicker number nine, Joel Garrett, will come out to try to give them this 7 nothing lead. And there you see Michael Osborne, who took the first kickoff, who scores the first touchdown, and now he's holding the ball for the place kicker. Snap is back. Hold is <laughs> lost by Osborne, and that'll be taken down. Yeah. Nice job there by number four for the Bulldogs. That is Braylon Gabes. 6-1 senior, and he stops the PAT. So with 8.42 to go, the Tigers lead 6-0. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Versailles High School. We're with 8.42 to go on the Wabash Mutual scoreboard. Versailles Tigers lead this line of Bulldogs 6 nothing. A little bit of everything there, Scott. A nice return on the kickoff. They ran the ball well, a big pass play, and then Osborne takes it in from about three yards out. Yeah, and by my unofficial stats, I had them 15 yards on the ground and 40 in the air and uh, one pass and six runs, so not a bad little drive there. Here comes Braylon Gaves as he'll take the ball to the 15, bounces around and goes up to the 30. So the Bulldogs with nice field position at about the 30-yard line, maybe the 31, 32-yard line. So that's where they will take over. They will be led on the field by their quarterback, Bobby Morris, the 5'10 junior, 155 pounds. And this Salina team went 6-5 and five last year, 6-3 and three in the WBL. They averaged 19.2 a game. Their calling card was defense. They were second in total defense in the WBL. They only allowed 232 yards a game last year, and they only allowed 16.4 uh, points per game. So big-time uh, defensive effort. Yeah, and, and a lot of Morris played as a sophomore, and they had a lot of their specialty guys were sophomores last year, which is going to pay off a bunch for them for mm -hmm. this year because, you know, um, one year under their belt as sophomores, the game's sure. going to slow down for them a little bit. Uh, it'll it'll be interesting. I, I, that's kind of why they are, their calling card last year was defense, right? Most of their skilled guys were sophomores, and it was kind of new and, and getting used to the var varsity uh, experience. But this year, I think it's going to uh, even out for them. So here comes Morris as he'll throw to the right side, go over to Gabes, and Gabes goes up for a gain of about two yards. So they're going to try to get their athletes out in space yeah. a little bit, Scott, and try to extend that field a little bit. Yeah, what they do is uh, yeah, they like to throw those uh, swing passes, at least they did last year a lot of times, sure. and to get their athletes in space and let them make a play. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Simplified Flooring is our instant replay sponsor. So second and 10, they're saying no gain on the play there from the 29-yard line. So Morris is in the gun. He's got one to the left. He's got a man in motion. They'll snap the ball. They'll hand the ball off. And they're going to pick up about three yards. Nice second effort there. Number two, the ball carrier there. That is Xander Jones, 5'11", senior. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. You know, they run that jet sweep and trying to go motion, trying to get you 
you know, misdirection here and and see one. A lot of times they like to get Morris out on the outside, use athleticism to run by people. Here's Morris, he'll drop back and he goes forward. He's gonna run the ball. Nice play. job. A great defensive effort by number 42 for the Cats, Luke Borchers. 5'5 five, five freshman does a great job of gashing through the middle and picks up a nice tackle. Great job. I think he came in on the uh, linebacker blitz and uh, he got pushed outside by the full or the fullback and then he was such an athletic play that he jumped inside and tackled the quarterback. So Salina down. will punt on fourth down back deep for the Tigers. Number 17 Michael Osborne and number four Lane Bergman. Nice high punt there picked up by Michael Osborne. He oh, makes one runner go. He's on to the right side. He's up the middle. He's at the 30. He's, one he's got block. one to beat. He's going to go through, and he's taken down. And a wonderful return as he takes it up to about the 15-yard line. I'm just going to say, if I was Salina, I think I'd kick it to uh, number four. <laughs> right. But uh, they go to Osborne, and he got a so, 40, 50 yard yeah, return there. Absolutely. I mean, he got a 40, 40 yard return on the kickoff and he got a 50 yard on the punt. My guess is they're going to squib it to him or kick <laughs> it out of bounds might be a better option. Everything going yes. for sales way right now. And it's the Michael Osborne show. The senior quarterback is doing it all. So he'll be in the gun. He's flanked on the left side by Blake Henry. They've got a receiver to the left, one to the right. They're in single coverage. Osborne's going to hand the ball to Henry. Henry goes off the left side, takes it up about five yards, and he's towards the goal line. And a nice run by the six-foot junior, Blake Henry. You know, what I was so impressed on that punt return is Osborne kind of he kind of slow played that, right? He, he set up his blockers. He made one good cut. He got to the outside, and then he started running hard. But, what you know, for a quarterback, he, <laughs> he's really that agile. Was, yes, that was impressive <laughs> how he set up his blocking and got down the field down the field and you know like that but you got to talk about the guys that were putting the blocks down too so here's osborne in the gun looks back to the coaches for the play he's got blake henry flanking him to the left he's got the one wide to the right and one to the left he's going to pitch it over to henry henry's going to take it straight up through the middle and he gets to the goal line and does he get in oh, they're, no, they're going to say he was down the one, yep. they're going to say he was down at the one so there's blake henry almost gets it in and right now scott the, the offensive line for sales is having their way with the d-line they line. sure are they like that left side they've been running a lot to that left side like to get out in space they've been exploiting the uh, actually the, the left the left side of that line is doing a heck of a job making some good blocks uh, and you look at these two teams, and they're both the rosters are huge when you look at Salina and Versailles. So a lot of participation from both these teams. Osborne's going to come under center. He's got an eye formation. He's going to hand it to first one up yeah. the middle, the fullback, and he goes into the end zone for another Versailles touchdown. That was a quick hitter, Scott. Sure was, and that's hard to read. That they just fouled those big guys up front, and the, the center and the two guards did a heck of a job of. Uh, getting low in their pad level and, and pushing the defensive lineman back and they just followed right behind him for an easy uh, fullback dive there for easy six points. So with 5.21 to go, the Versailles Tigers take the 12-0 lead. Yeah. They'll come on for the extra point. Right. Right. About the only thing Versailles done wrong right. this quarter is the bad snap <laughs> from here, yes. the low snap. We'll see if they can get that fixed. Osborne will hold as uh, Joel Garrett will try to attack on number 13. Good snap. Hold is up, kick is good. That was a better snap. That was right on the money, that one. And with 5.21 to go from Old Field here in Versailles, the Versailles Tigers lead the Slanta Bulldogs 13 to nothing. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Whole Field here at Versailles High School. 5.21 to go. The Tigers lead the Slana Bulldogs 13 to nothing. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We're invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. And Scott, look, it's 13 to nothing. And I, I realize it's the first quarter, but this almost feels like Salina has to get something going offensively. Well, you, you got to flip the field a little bit because uh, with these good punt returns and yes. kickoff returns, they're on the short field. Salina's got to do something to maybe pin them back and, and get that veteran good defense out here and maybe get a stop or two they'll field the ball right in front of the goal line as they're bringing up the right side and a nice return to the 30 yard line looks like number nine parker berkey brings the ball up through the middle and uh, that's where salina will take over with 515 to go down 13 to nothing 
Yeah. Lot, Go ahead, Eddie. A lot of matchups tonight, Scott, uh, especially MAC and uh, WBL and uh, some great games around the area. Uh, WSN's covering a lot of games, but what a great slate of high school football we got this weekend. Absolutely. There's a lot of a lot of good games, and, you know, just like every week here, WSN right. really gets the uh, – the best games in the areas, basketball, football, baseball, whatever there is. Bobby Morris with the yeah. throw across the field, and he finds number four. That's Braylon Gabes. That's his target right now as they pick up about five yards. It'll make it second and five. And you can tell Versailles is a little bit afraid of Gabes. They have a pretty yeah. big cushion there, and he just ran a, a five-yard stop. And uh, the good job by Solana to recognize that and get it out to him quickly. And, you know, all he has to do is make that guy miss. He's giving him that space. And, and, and Morris is doing a great job yeah. of getting the ball out on time. They, sure is. So, you know, they, they just need some confidence here to move that ball. And as you said, flip the field and get better field position. So Morris is in the backfield. He's flanked off to the right by one. He's got trips to the left. He's going to keep it himself, go off the right side, and he'll pick up about three yards and make it a manageable third down. We'll, go, we'll call it third and three with 4.27 to go. You know, it, it's – Get positive plays. Their first drive, they want minus two and plus zero on a, on two of the three plays. And you, you, when you're playing third and ten, third yes. and eleven, yeah, it's right, hard right. to come. Now you got third, three and third and two, so you got everything in your playbook here. Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got three to the left. He's got a single set back to his right, and he's got one flank to the right. He'll take the shotgun snap, keep it himself. He's going to try to get out of the back. He throws the ball, and he was falling down when his intended target number two, Xander Jones. I think he'd have been better served off to keep that ball, don't you think? Yeah, I think he was going to, but he was trying to make a play for his team. He was kind of getting tackled and seeing Jones out there. You know, if I, he had it. He just kind of yeah, he did. let that one. He slipped a little high, but if he'd got that down low on that might have been a reception for a heck of a play by. <laughs> and, and he was being Morris. taken down. Yeah, he had a right, he had a man right. at his feet, so maybe right. that caused the ball to sail yeah, high. I'm sure it did, and and I'm not faulting the young no, man. not at all. By no means on that play, but it was just he tried to make an athletic play. But another three and out for the sales defense. It's like yeah, not what you wanted if you're a Salina fan and they're resetting and, the play clock. And here. actually, they they started out with you know a promising drive of yeah. picking three and four yards up a play. So Salina's going to have to. Punt the ball here, a low snap, and a good kick, a fantastic kick yeah. as he drives it back to the 10 yard line, and they are going to down it at the eight yard line. That's exactly what Salina needed, something good to happen. So a fantastic kick by the Bulldogs as they'll pin the Tigers back deep. And if they're gonna go down the field here, Scott, they're yeah. gonna have to earn it. Well, it was a 53 yard punt, and he got, I think he caught one. I think the first time Morris, he just didn't get it, and he got it to, uh, <laughs> he got it to, uh, Osborne and he made them pay but this time they kicked it way over the head of Bergman. The smart thinking if you're the Salina coaching staff. What a great adjustment that was. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is the Wabash Mutual Telephone Company. Proud sponsor of Mercer County Athletics. Wabash Mutual is our scoreboard sponsor. 346 to go. Danny Holbrook, Scott Mag from Oldfield here in Versailles High School. A beautiful night for week one of the high high school football season. And there you saw a little bit of disruption there in the backfield. You saw Michael Osborne run into his running back, and he still picks up yeah. seven yards. And he's kind of sneaky, right? He's sneaky fast. He's shifty. He did a good job of turning his shoulders to not give anybody. You know, uh, you say this, and I've said this last year, and it's, it, it's hard. My wife questioned me on this. What do you mean by this? But he never gives – the tackler doesn't see the one in the seven when they tackle him. Do you notice yeah, that? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, he absolutely. turns and he, you know, he gives him a leg or whatever, but he never, he's never square. He's very tough to bring down because he never gives you his whole body to tackle, and that's why he's getting seven, eight, nine yards of run. So Osborne's in the gun. He's got door receivers to his left, to his right. He's got a man in motion. Osborne's going to hand the ball off. He'll go to the right side, and he is taken down. Good what play. a nice yeah. play by the Salina defense. The ball carrier on the play was Lane Bergman, and he was taken down. I think. That was Gabe's coming up from a safety position. Did a there. great job oh, of yeah. shooting the gap. He and sure did. He read that, and he was flying up in there. So that will bring up a third down here for the Tigers, their first third down of the game with 2.36 to go here in the first quarter. So Osborne will go in the gun. He's got Blake Henry off to his left side. He's got two receivers on each side of him. Looks over to the coaching staff, waits for the play call. Snap. Osborne's going to keep it himself. He's going to pick up the first down easily. 
And he'll be taken down uh, right about the 23, 24 yard line. John Lutz had him in his eyes set. He was, he was on the edge again as a defensive end. He come, he set the edge and Osborne just kind of turned and slithered past him. It's like he never gives anybody a clean shot at him. Right. That, I mean, Lutz was like sitting there waiting on him. So disgusting, got his <laughs> hands on his like, how do I get this guy down? Correction, that was James Schmidtmeyer, the fullback in the backfield with Osborne. He'll go into the gun. He's going to hand it to Schmidtmeyer up the middle. And he'll be taken down. And that's what Salina is going to have to do is limit those rushing yards. Yeah, good job by the defensive lineman. I couldn't see just, yeah, number 58, which I think earlier I mentioned that was, I said 68 was hurt, but I was wrong. It's number 58, Dalton Chilcote. Good, good to see that he came back. It must maybe a cramp or something, but what a great play by, by him and that interior lineman there to hang on and get him down. He was holding on to his feet, and one of his friends came and cleaned him up, but good job by Dalton. Second and seven. Osborne's in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his right, one to the left. He's going to look down the field. He's going to keep himself, go up the middle, and he's going to pick up about four yards and make it a very manageable third down. What kind of luxury is that, Scott, when you've got a quarterback, even if a play, and obviously the plays haven't broken down tonight, they're running what they want to run, but when they do break down, he's such a force with the ball. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the luxury of the spread offense, really. If you have sure. a good quarterback that can run, you know, I mean, everybody's doing that, everybody in the college level and is migrating down the high school and junior uh, high. That field. What it happens yeah. is you get every the, the tacklers away from from the would-be uh, people that are running the football. And if you've got a good quarterback to run, that just makes it even more important, a uh, potent offense, because who do you key on? So third and three, Osborne's going to come under center. He's got the eye formation. He's going to hand to the back, up the middle, and they're going to stop him, Scott. A huge stand by the Salina Bulldogs defensive line and a great job of penetration there yes. as they put the stomps on number 29, Ross Francis. He found no room at all. Yeah, Corbin Lehman came from his linebacker position and blew that one up. And, and the line did a good job. They didn't get pushed, right? You know, they kind of, they've been kind of beat up this first quarter. And to their credit, they held their ground and allowed those linebackers to shoot and fire those openings and make that tackle. And that'll do it for one quarter in the books here at Holt Field from Versailles High School. The Versailles Tigers lead 13 to nothing over the Salina Bulldogs. You're watching high school football on WLSN. Welcome back to Versailles High School. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve, your bank, your way. So, Scott, this is exactly what Salina needs. They're going to get good field position. Even, even if it's a fair catch, they're going to yeah. get better than what they've had all night. So, yeah. But I believe they're going to get up to about the 40 if they get a good return here. Absolutely, and that's exactly what, the, what they need to do. They kind of flip the field here a little bit. There's a nice punt. And he'll bring it up the sidelines, up the left side, and it's going to go to about the 35. That's where he'll be taken out of bounds. So that's where Salina will take over. That was number four, Braylon Gabes, who we've seen a lot of tonight. And they are making a conscious effort to get the ball in that young man's hands. So they know what he can do as they are down 13 to nothing with 11.49 to go. Yeah, from our uh, Versailles uh, historian came in and said, uh, Osborne, uh, was on ESPN last year making some catches during their tournament run. And his brother was a runner, so it must run in the family of how he can, <laughs> the shiftiness, so he maybe learned from Big Brother. And, yeah. You know, he was a receiver, and I guess he made some, uh, made it on ESPN a few times last year. So here's Bobby Morris in the gun. He's got one man in motion. Morris is going to hand off. A little He'll go to the left side. Oh, got it. Great run here yeah, what by the Salina Bulldogs. What a, you're right. Yeah. That was number 11 on the carry, John Lutz, and they had everybody fooled, including myself. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what a great play call by the uh, Salina coaching staff, right? Because Versailles has been pursuing very, very well to the ball. Now they get, now they got to make sure that kind of keep those guys a little bit of weary. Now you better stay home and because we might do some misdirection. And what a great play call that was. So here's Bobby Morris in the gun. He's got John Lutz, who just had a huge 35-yard run in the backfield. They've got a man in the slot, two to the right and one to the left. There goes the man in motion. They'll give it to Morris. Morris is going to keep it himself. He goes off the right side, and he's going to be taken down for a loss behind the line of scrimmage. So 
You see Salina and Scott, they're trying to get those athletes out on the boundary. And uh, yeah, that last call was the perfect play because Versailles is so active in the defensive line. Right, and they're doing a great job of uh, pursuing to the football that uh, that misdirection allowed that, that pursuit to kind of follow the first guy and the misdirection allowed him to go around the outside. I just think Morris right there didn't kind of, he kind of gave up on he the did. play, didn't yeah. follow his blockers. I thought if he went inside, he could have maybe got two, maybe three yards, but he tried to bounce it outside. And again, that's kind of the uh, an athlete trying to make an extra play instead of just taking what the defense gives you. Morris takes the gun, he goes with the ball. He's gonna try to go up the middle and he is just taken down pursuit and a great open field tackle by number 75, Dominic Meyer, the 6'3", 205 pound senior, laid the wood to him and he did a great job of stopping that run. Sure did. But I, they're, it kind of looks like maybe a little delayed blitz from the linebackers. They're like kind of letting him go back and then once he shuffles his feet a couple times, they're just firing through the hole and making him either pass it or make a decision to run. And then once he does does run, the line just kind of swarms and puts him puts him down on the ground. So the Bulldogs 35 yard line, third and 10, their best drive of the evening. Morris is gonna keep it. He's looking to throw the ball. He gets it out into the perimeter. He'll go to the left side. And they almost get up to the first down as he makes, Braylon Gabes makes the connection. And Scott, fourth and about three or so, uh, down 13 to nothing. I, I'm going to say they're going to continue this drive. I, I would think they are going to go for it uh, uh, with that. I, I think the second down play of the run yeah. pretty much gave it away that this was going to be a four down territory for me. <laughs> so here come the Bulldogs. They've got Bobby Morris in the gun. They've got Lutz to his left. We got trips to the right, a single receiver on the left side. Morris. Looks across the field for the play call. Six seconds on the play clock. Like They're going to have to take a timeout. Yeah. Yeah. They'll take They're this one, yeah. Make sure they got the right play called. And Absolutely. The defense are gone in. and uh, good, good call by the coaching staff. They're going to take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 9.17 to go. You're watching High School Sports on WOSN. Welcome back to Versailles High School. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Walmash Mutual Telephone Company. Proud sponsor of Mercer County Athletics. Scott, uh, maybe the play of the game so far right now at fourth and five from the 31 yard line. Salina desperately needs something positive, some kind of points out of this drive with 9.17 to go. Do you like the call? Uh, yeah, I, I do. I mean, what, what's a punt going to get you? Maybe right, right. 10 yards and, you know, right? Just to, to sh coaching staff showing the confidence in the offense that, hey, we know you can get four yards here. Morris is in the gun. He'll take the snap himself. Looks deep down the middle of the field. Like he's got a too. man out there oh, he off the fingertips. Him. Oh. He had Braylon Gabes wide open. Yeah. And really a nice pass, just a little bit over the yeah. fingertips of Braylon Gabes. I like the call. I really did. Absolutely. He was open, and he made the right. I think Gabes maybe kind of uh, ran it like a like rounded in post instead yes. of getting yeah. deep if he would have won. A couple steps deep, that's a touchdown. He catches it at the four, but he kind of flattened it out a little bit and then went deep. Just that one little step caused it to come off his fingertips. And, and I'll tell you what, Scott, Bobby, right. Bobby Boris showed you what an arm he's got. That yeah. was 40 yards, and that looked effortless. Right. He's kind of jumped out of his hand. He <laughs> sure did. So with 9-11 to go, Michael Osborne and the Versailles Tigers will take over at the 31-yard line. They're up 13 to nothing with 9-11 to go until halftime. And Hilbert Scott Mag from Whole Field here in Versailles. They'll hand the ball up off the middle for a gain of about four yards as they continue to churn out yards running behind that big offensive line. Number 26, Blake Henry, who we've seen quite a bit tonight. Yeah, they just kind of using their strength and dominance up the middle as they sub a smaller guy out for a bigger guy, number 81's checking in late here. And Scott, I, you feel like wa watching this game that we've been broadcasting, you feel like Salina's gaining a little bit of confidence. Uh, yeah. they, kind of a rough start, but they've kind of settled the uh, waters a little bit and really getting into the groove right now. Well, I think the coaching staff, offensively coaching staff, is finding some chinks in their armor of the Versailles because the first two drives, they had their number. Yeah. There's Blake Henry on the carry there for about two yard line or two yards, excuse me. And a great job of the Salina defense. That's going to bring up third and five. So another big third down play for the Salina defense. Yeah. 
I think the linebackers are also settling in a little bit. Maybe they just kind of a little bit, of, you know, first game jitters, and sure. uh, they're kind of seeing their, their holes and seeing their gaps and, and getting where they need to be. Uh, also, the offensive line for Versailles was – that really, first quarter, yeah. they, yeah, they pretty much dominated yeah. the line of scrimmage. So Osborne's in the gun. He's got a single set back to his right, and he's got three to the right. Osborne's going to keep it himself, go around the right side, tries to find the edge, and he is taken down, and he is nowhere near the first down marker. So there you go. Salinas defense steps up again, and they're going to get the ball back. Yeah, and a couple of Salinas defensive linemen shed the blockers, and they were kind of in pursuit. Yeah. And the linebackers stood up the receivers and didn't get pushed off, so they kind of set the edge there. So I think they're kind of figuring this out <laughs> yeah, a little I think bit. You're right. Which is, you know, it's it's first game of the year. You, the scrimmages say what you want. It's a play, and then sure. the coaches talk or, and get things done. But the first time they've actually had a clock and a running clock and all this other stuff. So a lot of times some of these kids are maybe the first time under the Friday night lights too. Caden Wurntz is back deep for the Bulldogs, and he'll take the punt. A nice high spiral as Warrens comes underneath of it, calls for the fair catch, and he'll catch it right about the 29-yard line. That's where the Salina Bulldogs will set up shop. Our instant replay is sponsored tonight by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Simplified Flooring. We say that fast three times. Yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> that would be tough. Danny Holbrook, Scott Mag from Versailles High School on a beautiful. I, I don't know that you can get better weather for high school football, Scott. I said Especially, it once before. It's, it's not even hot. Right. It's nice and cool. Especially in the August 18th. <laughs> right. We and, start and earlier. How, look how green this grass is, too. Oh, our mean, historian I, was telling us how they just put that in three weeks ago, and it's beautiful. Oh, wow. So here come the dogs and Bobby Morris. He's got Lutz off to his left. He's got two to the right, one to the left. He's in the shotgun formation. He'll keep it himself as he goes around the left side. And nothing doing there as he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up second in about 11. So far that, you know, that run just off the tackles has just not really worked that well for Solana, the uh, the ends for the defensive line for Versailles doing a great job, and the linebackers are coming up and feeling good. The only time they got around on the outside was some misdirections. You know, I was going to say the so, misdirections is what I would yeah, go back with. It was a great play. Either that or they got to get like something quicker. It seems like the plays are just yeah. slow to develop, and, and Versailles is just sitting there pouncing on them. Morris is going to hand the ball up to the first man up the middle. Gets about five yards on the carry. That's number nine for the Bulldogs, Parker Berkey. Young man with his carry of the night. That'll bring up third down and about seven yards. Yeah, it was, that one was a little bit quicker, as you can see. They got three yards. That one was kind of slow developing, and they just got smothered. 5.52 to go on a very fast first half here from whole field of Versailles High School. So Morris is back in the gun. He's got a single set back off to his right. He's got one on the slot and two receivers to his left and right. Morris is going to roll off to his right. He's going to throw to the middle, oh, and he misses him. his intended yeah, target, little. number 24, Nick Newell, as he just misses him as it falls short, and Salina will have to punt the ball away. Nice concept of a play. Yeah, Newell right. was completely open. Yes, sure was. And, you know, a little, uh, little roll out there and just kind of short-armed it, trying mm -hmm. to guide it in instead of throwing it. Xander Jones will punt the ball away for Salina, back deep for the Tigers. Number 17, Michael Osborne. And we've seen what Osborne does best. When he gets in the open field, he can really motor. And he's going to take the ball again. And great coverage oh, by yeah. the Bulldogs great as job. he is taken down immediately. And my goodness, a massive hit there for the Bulldogs on Michael Osborne. Number five, Jack. Hassan was a great job in his gunner position to get down there, and Susie <laughs> caught him. Not, he tackled him instantly. And great job by him that he didn't uh, allow him to, you know, get going. And he, as soon as he hit it, he took him down. He didn't hit him early. That was that was a heck. That's textbook. Heck of a play there. Pick a YouTube video out of that tackle. <laughs> that's right. So with 5:25 to go, the Tigers continue to lead 13 to nothing. Last year, Versailles was 7-3 overall, 5-3 in the MAC. Only allowed 99 rushing yards a game last year, as I said. The defense was their calling card. So here comes Michael Osborne as he's going to roll off to his left. He's chased. He's pursued the pocket. He'll go to the middle, and he'll be taken down 
for a gain of about maybe two yards. A great job by the Bulldog defense of corralling him as he goes into the middle of the line. Yeah. Got a first flag of the game, a little bit of hold, I believe, I just seen. Yeah, and that's going to back the Tigers up, so not what Versailles wanted. And, and look, first game of the year, you expect some penalties, and this has yeah. been a penalty-free game yeah. tonight. It's, it's right. amazing. It's been a well-played game. It's been very well-played. Fortunately, uh, whoever got called, I, I thought he said 52, but I don't see a 52. I don't see a 52 out there. Out there. Maybe uh, I see a 72. Well, maybe if, is there a 52 out there on the end? Mm. I don't know, but. Michael Osborne will go in the gun. He's got a single set back to his right, and he's got two to the left, two to the right, and he's going to hand the ball up off the right side and taken down. Good job. A great open field tackle. Yeah. By the Salina Bulldogs. Lutz, good job. <laughs> what a job by that young man. As he, he had nothing but green in front of him, and he did a great job of, you know, not letting him through the hole. He sure did. They tried to do a little bit of misdirection there. They did. They you did. Know. You're right. You know, unfortunately for an offensive lineman, the only time you get the number called is when they make a play. But number, number 52 for Versailles was the last one that had that hole. But to his credit, he's trying to Gilmore. He's trying to make a play for his quarterback because he knows how good a runner he is. He's just trying to get in the way and maybe got a little bit of too much of a jersey and got called for a penalty. So second and 20 on the board. 4.27 to go. Osborne looks to throw the ball. A little screen pass to the right. Oh, and just a red. big time tackle sure. by number 50 for the Bulldogs. Tucker Ackley, as he comes out of nowhere, yeah, and just makes a from great his linebacker play. position. He read that one. He read that one perfectly. And somebody. Got a defensive Salina, player yeah. down for Salina. So we've got an injury on the field. We'll take another timeout in the booth. You're watching high school football on WOSC. Back here at Whole Field from Versailles High School, injured Salina Bulldog as he goes off the field. Looks like he's going to be okay. Walks off on his own power, so that young man doing okay on the sidelines. Third and 21 with 4.10 to go here in the, until halftime. Salina leads 13 to nothing. Osborne is in the gun. He's got one off to his left, and he's got trips to the left. He's going to roll to the left side. He's got a man out in the open, and he's going to be taken down for a, uh, close to a first down marker. But... Uh, well, close to the original line of scrimmage, I should say. But for a third and 20, my fault. That'll bring up fourth down. That'll put Versailles in pump formation. Back deep for the Bulldogs. Number four, Braylon Gabes, as they continue to try to get the ball in his hands. Huge drive here for the Bulldogs as they're down 13 to nothing. If they can put some points on the board, don't forget, they get the ball first coming out of the second half. And they've played really well defensively since the 13 to nothing spot right. in the beginning of the first quarter. Absolutely. And Versailles is going to take a timeout. So 317 to go. The Tigers lead 13 to nothing. And Scott, we take a look at the uh, the, the weekend in uh, in high school football here in the, our area, and obviously the big game uh, everybody's talking about, Wapak and Marion Local. Uh, some great matchups, but uh, I, I like those uh, those WBL MAC matchups. I like the NWC NWCC matchups. Just getting those uh, conferences to come together. Yeah, absolutely. It's you know, it, it, unlike college football, you, when you got three major, there's, <laughs> right. you know, with only ten teams, and they're able to play. Give those schools credit that they want to play sure. the best team from another conference. One of the WBL best, maybe play the MAC best sure. or second best. Play sec you know, it's good that they're not afraid that, you know, you got one non-league game and you play a, a tough team. Uh, and it I, benefits everybody. Absolutely. You know, because of points with the computer system and all that good stuff, it just, what a great concept that is. Play, you want to get better, you got to play better competition. So here comes Versailles in pump formation. So they get a nice punt away, and it's going to be fielded by Gabes. He's trying to track it down. He may just let that roll down. Yeah, he is, absolutely. And that's going to go to the 16-yard line. So Braylon Gabes there kind of got caught in no man's yeah. land. He understood that if he picked it up, there was a good chance he was going to get hit hard, and who knows what would happen. So a, a smart play by that young man. Yeah, they let it go, but he probably kicks himself that he didn't run up in yeah. uh, fair Earlier, catch that. Yeah. yeah, it could have saved his team about 15 
20 yards there if he came up and caught that, fair caught it. But he kind of was like hesitant and yeah, cost he was. him. So Bobby Morris will bring the troops out with 3.06 to go as they try to get something happening on the scoreboard as they're down 13 to nothing. Yeah. You know, give him credit, smart, that he didn't try to, like, after he was a little hesitant, that he didn't want to pick it up and cause a turnover here or anything. Morris gets his ball in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Lutz. Lutz goes off the left side. Gets a nice gain of about eight yards. But that was quick, right? It, I mean, he, Lutz basically one cut, put his foot in the ground, and away he went. It was a, you know, you can't you can't mess around here because Sales is such a good team of pursuing to the football that they did a heck of a job there. And Lutz just put his head down and ran as hard as he could. And got nine yards there. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. The People's Bank is our presenting sponsor. So 2.42 to go. Tigers lead 13 to nothing. Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got one in the slot, one off to his left, and he's got a receiver on the left and right and a man in motion. Morris takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball to Lutz off the left side, and Lutz is going to get a first down and more, and Lutz is really running hard right now, yes, Scott, he as he's picked up another 8 to 10 yards. Good job by Lutz to, you know, he's like, hey, I haven't had touched many touches and I've got openings. And he did a good job of setting up his blockers there, too. Good job by the line to get out and the uh, uh, receivers out here blocking out air on the defensive backs allow Lutz to get the eight yards there. So a huge drive right now for the Salina Bulldogs down 13 to nothing. Lutz is in the gun. He's got trips off to his left and he's got one on the right, or the left side, excuse me, and a single set back. He's going to take the snap. He's going to roll off to the right side. He goes back up the middle. He's under heavy pressure, and he's going to be taken down right behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think that was going to be to Gabe's here, a little out in the flat. They kind of flooded the three guys in the flat, and uh, Newell, number 24, was going to go deep. But uh, Dominic good. Meyer did a great job, and we've called his name several times yeah. tonight. He's really eaten tonight in yeah. the defensive line. He sure is. They got the back to Morris quicker than he wanted to get the ball out of his hands. So that'll bring up second and 10 with 1.30 to go as the clock winds down towards halftime. Morris will take the snap. He looks downfield. He steps up in the pocket. He's under heavy pursuit. He's going to go to the left side. He's got all kinds of daylight, and he picks up a much-needed first down by the Bulldogs as he's driven out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. Yeah, nice 12-yard run there. Good job by good decision. He could have threw it, but he said, now nah, I got all this green grass in front of me. I'm just going to take off and run. And when he did, he he uh, put his foot in the ground and took off and got a nice 12-yard gain for him. And a great job of getting out of bounds to yeah. stop the clock, and yeah. now it starts back up. Morris is in the gun again. He's going to take the snap. He looks to the left, looks off to the right, scrambles to the left side. He's going to throw back, oh. and it's picked off. Yeah. Picked off. What a nice play. Yeah. And it looks like, let's see if we can get a number on the number 42. 42. Yeah. James Schittmeyer. Nice job by that young man. We've called his name several yeah. times as he snuffs out the Salina drive and a nice drive by the Bulldogs that comes up short with an interception. Yeah. Unfortunately, Morris kind of laid across the middle trying to make a play. She probably should have threw it out in the flat to Gabe's. Would have been about two yards. Could have jumped out of bounds. They tried to make a play, and good job by the uh, linebacker to step in front and pick that one off. So here comes Versailles with 102 to go as they try to tack on points to this lead, leading 13 to nothing. Michael Osborne's in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right, two to the left, and one in the slot. He takes the snap, looks to the right, he rolls back around, looking for receivers downfield. He throws it deep down the left side, almost picked off, and a lot of contact, but no flag. Uh, Hassan back there again. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell who was going to catch that yeah, ball, me Scott. Either. It was Hassan back in coverage. It was attended for uh, Lane Bergman. So that will bring up second and ten with under a minute to go, 54 seconds. And there you saw the Tigers trying to strike deep to add to this lead. Quiet second quarter for the Versailles offense as Salinas defense has really got stout. So here come the Tigers up 13 to nothing. Osborne is in the gun. He's got one single receiver to his right and three to the left. 
He looks across the field, steps back up. He's going to take it up the middle, and he's going to get a nice gain. Another first down. As he, through tackle. <laughs> he absolutely was, and if he didn't get tackled by the last guy, he had a lot of field in front of him. Tucker Ackley is like smacking his hands like, man, I had him, and he stepped right through me. <laughs> and we've got a slime of Bulldog yeah. down on the field, so we're going to take a timeout with 46 seconds to go. You're watching high school football on WSN. Number six, Corbin Lehman was the Salina Bulldog player who was down. He walks off the field by himself, but walking off a little gingerly. Let's hope that young man is okay and able to come back in the game. 46 seconds to go. Tigers lead 13 to nothing as they're marching down the field on the 36-yard line, trying to attack more points onto that lead. You got Michael Osborne in the gun. He takes the snap. He looks across the field, looks to throw. Throws back across the middle. He's got a man out there and a nice job of the ball being deflected by the Salina defensive backfield. Yeah, good job by Kane Wirtz. That'll stop the clock with 34 seconds to go. We've seen uh, Osborne able to <laughs> throw the, he's got a strong arm, but boy, that's a tough throw for anybody. Jack. Yeah, that was kind of on the run across his body to the back for 20 some yards. Trying to make a play, but throwing in triple coverage. I'm sure his coaches weren't, weren't <laughs> too happy about that one. <laughs> Glad to see that one go incomplete. So that'll bring up second and 10 from the 36 yard line. 34 seconds to go. Osborne's in the gun. He's got two to the right, one to the left, and a single back. He's going to take the snap, looks across the field. He's under pressure. He'll throw to the middle, and that just misses everybody. And that'll bring up third down. So third and ten. So the Salina defensive backfield is really doing a nice job of covering all the athletes they're sending out. Yeah, they drop it about seven, I think, yeah. in the coverage there and rushing four. But the goes, those four guys were getting in there and getting – and Osborne, I could tell you, he's getting happy feet back in there. I don't know if his internal clock was uh, winding down and – didn't know if he should run it, but give the defensive line for Salina credit. They kind of kept him in the pocket too. That's also a wonder. That's also a win. Absolutely. So 29 seconds to go. Third and 10 from the 36. Tigers trying to add on. They've got trips to the left. Osborne's got a single back to his right and a single receiver to the right. Osborne looks across the field. He's going to throw back to the left. He's got a man out in the flat, and he is taken down. You want to talk about a smackdown. John yeah. Lutz come out and hit him Actually, really hard. Yeah. Knocked his helmet off. I'm sure, did he, I'm sure he might be seeing a little bit. Oh, my Grease goodness. Is, uh, Grease Dorn, yeah. He got uh, whacked. He's coming off the field, and he yeah. is looking woozy. Let's hope that young man is okay. Yeah. He got hit hard, and that will bring up fourth. And about five, and that's where Versailles is going to take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We're going to step aside. We're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back for excuse me for sales high school with three point oh seconds to go. Scott, what, what, the timeout was called, and I understand what they want to do. Uh, it looks like they're going to go for it here with three seconds. Do you think he's just going to take the snap and fall back? or I, I, I'm sure the coach has talked about this is definitely going to be the last play, and uh, if no one's open, you eat it and go that, down. That, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I, I, absolutely. If you're going to go for it, you try to score, but with three seconds to go, you don't want to you know, make a mistake here, and uh, we're going to keep it here yeah. as uh, Salina takes a timeout. I don't know how uh, seven tenths of a second got off the clock. <laughs> right. Probably going to put three back on there. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah, he's saying right here the three put three seconds back on. A little bit of a chess match here by the yeah. coaching staffs of both teams with three seconds to go. And maybe Salina didn't think they were going to run anything, but <laughs> we wanted to see if what they were going to do, and maybe did some subs with uh, some defensive backs or something here. I'm. The last thing you want to do if you're for sales is yeah. make a mistake and give up a, something easy for Salina. Uh, obviously, you know, it, it'd have to take a drastic mistake for them to, you know, score with three seconds to go. Uh, but we've seen crazy things like this happen Correct. all the time. And I wonder if Salina's going to have two or three guys back at the five-yard line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, saying uh, nobody gets behind you. So right. for sales is going to put three out wide to the right. They've got a, they've got a receiver to the left. Single step back off to the right side of 
Osborne. Osborne's going to take the snap. He's going to roll to the right. He looks back to the left. He throws deep down the left side. He's oh, got yeah. a man out there in the end zone. What and a play. Got, what a catch. Oh, yeah. Number 12, Jace Watrin, the junior, picks up the, or makes an incredible catch is all I'm going to say. Yeah. What a catch. So the last thing Salina wanted to happen happens, and the Tigers score, and they go up 19 to nothing on the Wabash type on scoreboard. I think what happened is this defensive back here on this side kind of weren't Scott kind of caught looking because he thought Osborne was going to run out to the right to the strong side, and he stopped and threw back. And he kind of surprised him and let the receiver get behind him for the touchdown. So a big time play by the Versailles quarterback as they try to tack on the point after here. S snap is back, low snap, kick is up, and it is good. So after one half of play here from Versailles High School, the Versailles Tigers lead the Salina Bulldogs 20 to nothing. We'll have second half action when we come back right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Versailles High School for the start of the second half. Danny Hobart, Scott Mag from Versailles High School, where the Tigers lead this line of Bulldogs 20 to nothing. And Scott, let's take a look at the first half. And uh, it, it's 20 to nothing, but it doesn't have a blowout feel to it because Salina played a really good second quarter. Yeah, they did. But uh, if you look at the stats, some of the stats that I got, uh, first we'll start with Salina. They're just three of seven passing for nine yards, and one of those is for an interception. Uh, running the ball, they have 12 runs for 66 yards with one of the runs being for 30. So really, they haven't really moved the ball, and that's why they have zero on the scoreboard. It's obvious. Uh, for, for sales, they're 5 of 7 passing for 80 yards. One of those completions was a 36-yard touchdown right at the end of the uh, second quarter. Here's, a, here's this. They got 18 runs for 74 yards, the longest being 16. They have a touchdown run of 3 and 1. So they've been getting five, six, seven yards to crack for those 18 runs, controlling the ball, and then uh, that's why they're up 20 to nothing. And Salina obviously only getting uh, 75 yards on of offense the first half, one of them being a 30-yard run, so not much done offensively. Salina's got to get that fixed here in the second half. And, of course, the last play of the first half, yeah. a, a terrific play uh, by the Versailles Tigers to score the – the, the last touchdown of the half to go up 20 to nothing. So Versailles will kick off. Salina will receive the ball here first in the second half as the sun has settled down and the lights are on here at whole field. I, you know, if you kind of talked about it a little bit in the first half about a must drive, I, I think this coming out here, Salina has to, has to at least get yes, yes, 20, something, 30, yeah, 40 exactly. yards, something positive here to turn this out or this could get ugly in a hurry. If they go three and out and Versailles comes and scores, it, it yeah. might take the wind out of their sails. But I think Salina's got to come with their best five, six, seven plays. They got to have scripted and, and come out and get something positive here on this possession. So the Versailles Tigers will kick the ball off here as we start the third quarter, week one, the Ohio high school football season. Looks like they stop something on the field for some reason and now we're underway here so we are underway the second half from whole field Versailles high school a kind of a squib kick going to go out of bounds so salina is going to get really good field position at about the 27 yard line with no return there and that's where they'll take over bobby morris the junior quarterback uh, not a bad first half. He made a couple mistakes with the interception that really cost him on the, on the probably their best drive of the afternoon. Right. He tried to, again, you can't fault him. It, 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 looking back, the tape's going to be a good learning yes. experience yeah, for him absolutely. Come on, tomorrow morning when he gets in in the, in the film room and the coach is going to say, you know, you should have took, you should have took to, to uh, Gabe's, was on the sideline for a two yard gain, going to got out of bounds, but instead, you know, don't fault the kid. He's trying to make a play, trying to throw across his body into coverage. He got picked off and then ended up leading to a touchdown. But, you know, it's just something that in, in his maturation process he's going to learn. And, yeah. and next year he don't throw that. He throws it to Gabe's probably and he goes, goes out of bounds for two yards. Point. And that's a learning experience. Morse looks across the field. He goes to the left side. He's got a completion out at about the 38. And they'll move the ball for a first down and a nice pickup. 
And you saw number two there, Xander Jones, Jones with the reception and uh, a great first play in the second Absolutely half. Absolutely right. I mean, we talked about this, that they got to they script their first five, six, seven best plays and, and get something positive just to just to have the kids believe in, in themselves. You know, you, the dog days of August and July <laughs> out there in the practice field, and you know, these guys, you, you know. want to see some success. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. The fruits of their labor, so to speak. Morse is going to hand the ball off to the first guy up, and that's Lutz, and Lutz gets about two yards. He did the bulk of the ball carrying in the first half for the Salina Bulldogs. That'll bring up second in about ten. Yeah, I don't care who you are. If you're going through two-a-days and it's 90 degrees in August, you know, God bless you, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's no way this, this fat old guy can be out there doing that. No. So I, my heart goes out to every one of these kids, even the guys that are standing here on the sidelines, <laughs> to go through what they have to go through on the, in August, and you just want something positive to happen for these guys. Second and 10 from the 42, Morris is in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's got a receiver to his left. He's gonna hand the ball off to Lutz, off the left side, gets a big hole, and he picks up another. He's close to another first down. So there you see Lutz flexing his muscles a little bit, and this is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and again, I like this jet sweep. I like this fax action. I, I think that's something that Salina ha can have some success in because the quick thing, the slow developing in plays, the pursuit by Versailles is so good. They got to get fast. They got to hit him before the pursuit comes or misdirect it and try to trick him. And, and that's kind of what Salina's done these plays, and, and they've been successful. This has been the best four or five plays, and they've ran all game so far. Absolutely. Third and one, Morris is in the gun. He's going to keep it himself, go off left tackle, and picks up a first down, a much-needed first down, as he's hit by a host of Versailles Tigers. But nonetheless, a first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah. But it, it just seems like maybe Solana's a little bit more confident than they believe right, in what they right. do. At the beginning of the game, it was kind of slow, methodical, and it's, it's like they, were they, were re they weren't reacting. They, right. were, they, they were reacting. They weren't just playing football. Correct. Right. And yeah. now they're just like, hey, guys, we're just going to do this. And, and look at this. <laughs> They've gained 20, 30 yards. I, I, I think this what we've seen so far in these first two minutes. This is what I thought Solana would be. Absolutely. When we got here tonight. So first and 10 from the 41, Morris is in the gun. He's got a one back to the right, and that's Lutz. He's going to fire off to the right side. He's got a man out there, and he's going to pick up nice yardage, about eight yards, as he finds number four, Braylon Gabes, who he's targeted quite a bit tonight, and that'll bring up second and short. And again, that's kind of a little misdirection. Had one couple guys going one way, him coming across the formation to get to the other side. It's good, good football, good Good adjustments by the Solana coaching staff at halftime. You know, yeah. coaches get all the blame for when they lose. And, sure. you know, maybe some of the Solana people are like, oh, my gosh, here we go again. <laughs> right? But right. good adjustments there at halftime by the coaching staff to put this together. This is a heck of a drive and great adjustments they made at halftime. Here's Morris in the gun. He's got Lutz, and he fakes the handoff. He's got a little sweep there. So he'll go to the left side, and there's a lot of room out there. He picks up a first down, number four, Braylon Gabes. Yeah. And I like the play call on that play. Sure. 9 2 to go. Tigers lead 20-0. Danny Hobart, Scott Mag from Versailles High School. The first drive of the second half, and the Salina Bulldogs are doing a nice job of taking it towards the goal line. And, and if, just my unofficial stats, they've had a play of 11 8 Eight, six, four, and two. So everything is a positive yardage. And look, they're kind of going methodically right down the field. So here comes Morris in the gun. He's got Berkey to the right. He's got a man in the slot, one to the left. Morris is going to keep and go off the right side. He's got a blocker in front of him as he tries to turn the corner, and he's going to be taken out of bounds. And that'll bring up a second down. And they're trying to get their athletes in space to make a play. That's it. I, I like everything they've done so far in this quarter. Yeah, they're very confident right yeah. now, moving the ball down the and look, if they can put the ball in the end zone and get a stop quick yeah, and, right. and score, you know, this this is a whole new ball game yeah. at twenty to seven. Right. And they're playing faster and more confidence. Well, and also, it looks like they're putting Morris in a, in a position to succeed. They're not asking him to throw the ball down the field a lot. There's just some swing passes and some flares, and uh, really doing a nice job. So here's yeah. Morris. He's going to throw off the left side. He's got his man out there, and he's got some room out there to move, but he's taken down. Makes Great the play. first man miss. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Still gained two yards, positive yards. A lot of work by Gabe's to get those two <laughs> right. yards, but at least it's a positive thing where, you know, in the first half, I was writing down a lot of zero yards, and they weren't getting anything, so. It's gonna bring up third and eight from the 25. The drive continues with 8.17 to go here in this third quarter. 
Where sales leads 20 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Scott Mag from Holdfield, historic Holdfield here at Versailles High School. It's my first trip up here to Versailles. Beautiful facility, Absolutely. wonderful people, and it's been a great night of football. Here's Morris in the gun. He's going to roll to his right, looks downfield. He throws across the middle, and that's deflected down. And that's going to bring up a big decision for the Bulldogs with fourth and seven from the 24. Yeah, I, I think this is a no-brainer. you got to yeah, go, yeah. For, go for it. But, but you're right, it's a big decision. I think, more importantly, I think it's, it's a big play for this line of Bulldogs right here on the – you know, fourth and seven from the 24-yard line. But great play by, I didn't see who knocked that down. I, I think it's either. number 70, I believe, and that is uh, Caleb Pettigene yes. was, uh, got his big paw up there and knocked that one down. Good job by the defensive lineman. They knew they couldn't get to the quarterback, get their hands up and knock that one down. Here's Morris in the gun. He's got Parker Berkey off to the right. He looks down the field. He's going to throw in got towards him. the end zone. It's picked off. Picked off late. the goal line. Yeah. Like number 80 for the Cats, and that is Levi Barga, the 5'11 senior, just steps in, plays center field, makes yeah. a nice catch. And, and, and I think Morris was trying to get the guy laid across the middle, kind of the same thing how he's got his uh, his other interception. So another promising drive snuffed out by the Versailles defense. But again, I don't think if you're Salina coaching staff, I think you're you're pretty happy with that drive. On, other, other than the fact he didn't come away with points, right? In the interception, he, and he got he, he ran that out and got to the 19. So that's a that's a great call, yeah. Scott. They, they didn't score, but they did push the ball yeah. back towards the, the goal line. So you know there is some positives here to look at. Here comes Osborne. He's going to keep the ball himself, and he's going to get a gain of about two yards. He'll go up the middle, and that'll bring up second and eight from the 21 yard line. It's a little bit, you know, different. Solano was playing a little bit faster, a little bit of pace, and Versailles with the 20-point lead can, can slow yeah, play it, say, right? Yeah. They, they want to work clock. They want to use a lot well, of that th 40 seconds. And, yeah. And that, no sense of playing fast because we got all the time in the world. That's a great point, Scott. With with a 20-0 lead, I, I highly doubt you're going to see him put the ball in the air this far back into the Salina territory. But here comes Osborne in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's got a single receiver to his right and to his left. He'll take the snap and he'll pitch it back to the up man. And he'll go across. And, ooh, a vicious a hit out there. And Gaines. that looks like Blake Gaines. Henry. <laughs> and Gabe's came in and finished him off, led with his shoulder. We've seen Gabe's make a couple big time hits tonight. Oh, He's fearless. Safety, yeah, from a safety position, but still a gain of about five there. That'll bring up third and about, not third and two. Yeah. That's what they're calling it from close to the 30 yard line. So a big third down for the Salina defense. If they can hold here and get the ball back. Michael Osborne, he's under center now. He's in the eye formation. He's got two behind him. He's going to keep it himself. And the big quarterback's going to break it right through the middle, and he's going to get the first down. So there you see the strength and the yeah. ability of Michael Osborne, 5'11", 185 pounds. Just use that whole frame and go straight to the middle. Yeah, but also the uh, he just he was he's no dummy. He followed his center and two guards, and they fired off the ball pretty good. So the, those two guys got him those three yards, or those yeah. three guys, excuse me. And the other thing it does is it keeps that clock moving yeah, exactly what they want right. to do, and they're just going to grind it out here. Yeah. The, uh, you know, they didn't pass the ball very much. Uh, the first half, and they basically did six of their seven passes were the last two drives right. of the game. So uh, my guess is this might be a lot of ground and pound by Versailles. There's Henry again off the left side as he gets a big gain of about especially five yards. Especially when you're gaining four or five yards of crack, I, I wouldn't want to pass the ball either. Well, last year's version of the Versailles uh, Tigers was seven and three and five and three in the MAC, and they ran for 205 yards per game. So that's their calling card, yeah. and then nothing's changed with this new set of kids out here on the field tonight, and uh, they want to establish that run, and they've done a great job of that. Tonight. Yeah, and we mentioned, we touched on this in the first half. We said, you know, the first game, you get, you know, it's like the new car you want to try out all right. the bells and whistles, but. You know, when Kelly said it's still a car, you still got to put it drive to drive. You know, <laughs> hey, look, it's, it, Scott, I say this all the time. It's football. You got to run and you got to stop the run. If you yeah. do those two things, yeah. more than likely you're going to be successful. Yeah. And that's exactly what Versailles yeah. has done tonight. It's like a car. You put gas in it, turn it on, <laughs> it's going to go, right? Just like this, a running game and kind of the same thing here. Got a flag on the field uh, in, the, in the area of holding. Let's see what the call is. But. Uh, that is in the area holding right in the interior of that front line. So let's see 
what they decide here. Face yeah. mask. No, face, face mask. Yeah, because they're talking to yeah, the Versailles right. coach here. Yep. So it's going to be a personal foul against the Salina of Bulldogs. And that happened at the end of the play, right in the middle of yeah. the interior of that uh, offensive line. So a big break for the Versailles Tigers as they move the ball up 15 yards. And we touched, again, we touched on this. One penalty the first half was a holding, minus 10 for Versailles. Here's a face mask, Salina's first penalty. Five minutes to go in the third quarter, 15 yards. I, again, if sure. you're a coach and say, hey, we're going to get three quarters and each team's going to have one flag, how would you would you take it? The, oh, absolutely, sure yeah. Take 15 yards and 10 yards? They would say absolutely would take that. So that'll bring up first and 10 from the 45-yard line. Osborne is in the gun. He's got a single set to the left. He's got two to the right and two to the left. He'll take the snap. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to follow the lead blocker and go down. He's going to lose a yard as he slips on the uh, grass as it's uh, getting a little slippery out there tonight with these low temperatures. And I say low temperatures, I mean comfortable temperatures. Jack Elcher from his uh, defensive line got, it, got in there and kind of made Osborne kind of toe dance around him and allow his friends come clean that one up. Well, regardless of the outcome, Scott, I think you and I will both agree that Versailles will be a factor in the MAC this year. They've got all kinds of weapons on both sides of the ball. And don't get me wrong, I think Salina might have a oh, say in the WBL a little bit too. They'll be in the top half for sure. It's just they just got to learn some confidence and get some things going. Which you know that last drive, if they could, they would have started out this way. That might be a different outcome right now. Sure, so absolutely. absolutely nothing. Blake Henry is up the first man with the ball. He's going to come up the middle, and he'll go for about five yards. You look at Salina, Scott, and everything they've done, they're correctable mistakes. Yeah. The yep. penalties, the interceptions, and you said it best. Bobby Morris is going to learn from this game. He's going to be a good quarterback. We've seen the tools that young man has. These are all correctable mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. You know this defense is only going to get better, and uh, Gabes is a heck of a player on the offensive end, and you know, don't count out uh, Jones either. Sure, Jones had a couple catches that last drive and did some things, so they got some uh, talented guys on the offensive side. And Lutz does a heck of a job, runs hard, so they got some things. They just gotta, they just gotta put it all together. Bring up third and five from the 40. He'll keep it himself. <laughs> Michael Osborne, a great job of picking up the first down. Michael Osborne has been doing it all tonight for the Tigers. I mean, he was hit three, three yards down, and then he kind of sidestepped and drug a guy for a yard, and then he kind of went through the – he's hard to bring down. Well, that, that. It, it, you look at that, the, the sequence of plays, Scott, and at third and five, they've done it all night with Osborne. He's picked up that first down, and it's really demoralizing to the Salina defense. They play really well for two downs, and then, you know, you give up the big play there. Right. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 33 with 2.51 to go here in the third quarter as this game's slipping away from the Bulldogs. And eating it, you know, they haven't passed this eight consecutive run, make it nine. Osborne flips the ball back to number 29, Ross Francis, and I there's a flag. I think they're a hold there. I think you're right. That came in, he's already motion and hold. Yeah. That'll go back 10 yards. Yes, sir. So first and 10, that'll bring up first and 20 as they'll push the ball back 10 yards. Yeah, that was uh, right on the edge. I think Osborne or whoever was running there kind of snuck back. Yeah. Hold, holding on. He said 17? Osborne. <laughs> I think he was trying to lead and try uh, to make a play. And he kind of grabbed the Well, the he, he pitched the ball back to the right. I don't know yeah. how he had time to hold, but they're yeah. saying it was on uh, yeah. the quarterback for Versailles. As I've seen a couple of Salina coaches going crazy on that play. It's like, oh, and then the flag comes out. I'm like, yeah, they got him. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I think they hooked him is what coach, he explained to the coaches. If I could. Last year for Versailles on the season, they had 28 rushing touchdowns and 14 passing touchdowns. So they mixed it up and a, a, a good balance of uh, run and pass as they finished the year last year at 7-3. And, and they were a huge factor in the MAC at 5-3. and three. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. Osborne's in the gun. He's got Francis off to the right. He's got three off to his right, receivers, and one to the left. This might be the first pass of the... Uh, He's going to roll off to his right, looking deep down the middle, and he nice finds pass. his man. Got and he sat down right in the zone. The one. He finds A.J. Grisdorn, 6'3", senior, and an absolute bullet that he threw yeah. there. 
You saw the strength of uh, Michael Osborne's throwing mechanics there as he had left no doubt where that ball was going. Yeah, Chris Dorn did a heck of a job, got in the zone, sat down. Osborne rifled it to him. He caught it. It's good for him because he got, I remember <laughs> right. the first half, he got his bell rung. Yes, he did. I'm glad that young man's back on yeah. the field. So here comes Osborne in the shotgun. He's got a single receiver to his left. He's got two to the right, one in the slot, and a single set back behind him. 129 to go. Tigers lead 20 to nothing here on WOSN. Dan Hilbert, Scott Mag from Versailles High School. There's Francis up the middle and gets tough yardage of about eight yards, and he'll pick up another Tiger first down. Slithers, doesn't he? Like he, just he kinda, does. You're right. That's a good way to put it. Hides behind those big guys and slithers and dances his way to to some. 5'9", junior, he does a heck of a job back there. He I'll tell you what, with Osborne in the backfield and with Blake Henry and Ross Francis, that those are weapons back there. Yeah. All three of those guys can really move the chains. Yeah, and Francis does a good job of kind of hiding dances back he there. He does, you're right. <laughs> That'll bring up first and 10 from the 20. As Osborne is in the gun, he looks across the field to get the play. He's got a single receiver to his left in single coverage. He's going to hand the ball off to Francis again. He'll bounce off the left side, and he's going to pick up another five yards, and a flag comes in immediately. Yeah, both the umpire and the sideline side judge both had a flag. They probably got the same thing. So we'll see what the play call here is as the officials huddle. It came in real quick, so both yeah, two, sure two of them had the same idea. Yeah. And that's going to go against I think, Salina. I think like another face, face mask, maybe. Personal foul. Yeah. You're right. Good call, Scott. Good call. And that'll go 15 yards on the personal foul, and that'll move the ball closer to the goal line with 43 seconds to go and a fantastic drive by the Versailles Tigers. And look, Scott, we talked about the play calling of Salina on that first drive in the third quarter. And, and, and they get the interception down here. And what a response from Versailles. Yeah. Their kids kept their heads, right. and they just came right back at them. Right. And ate up basically <laughs> the, the third minutes. quarter. Yeah. yeah. They, this is a nine-minute drive, and then still not, which we're going to have to snap this with about 15 seconds left in the quarter. So Osborne is under center at this time. He's got Francis in the backfield. They've got three of them in the backfield right now. So they're going to give Francis up the middle. Followed a whole bunch of blockers, and he's pushing, gets to the five-yard line. Great job by Ross Francis, the 5'9 junior. He didn't hide behind his lineman there. Yeah, he went straight at him. Churning them legs, <laughs> pushing that pile for a gain of four or five there. And, and that's going to be the last yeah, play no way they snap again. of the third quarter. So after yep. three quarters from Sales High School, the Tigers lead 20 to nothing. Back for fourth quarter action right here on WSN. Welcome back to Versailles High School for the start of the fourth quarter. The Tigers lead this line of Bulldogs 20 to nothing. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. If you're interested in the communities we serve, your bank, your way. Our scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone Company. Proud sponsors of Mercer County Athletics. A huge drive right here, Scott. Oh, yeah. I, my unofficial stats, have, I got 11 plays. One of them was for no gain. Everyone else is positive on that. That's amazing. And then 30 yards of penalties. No, and it took up nine minutes and counting. Tonight's instant replay is simplified flooring. We make flooring simple. Osborne is under center. He's got three backs off to his right and left as they're just going to pound the rock right up the middle. And they'll give it to Francis off the right side as good he tries job. to get in, and he's Lutz. taken down. Yeah. Lutz, Lutz has had a good game offensively yeah. and defensively. Set the edge, and uh, unfortunately, you see another guy down. Another guy down for yeah. Salina. So we've got an injury. I hope it looks like maybe like a cramp. He's holding his lower leg. So. So but he's, uh, he's in some pain, so we're going to let the athletic trainer take care of that, and uh, we'll take another break. Step aside. We're watching high school football on WSN. I'm back here at Versailles High School. Danny Hubert, Scott Mag for WSN High School Football Week 1. Sales Tigers jumped out to a 20-0 lead and uh, trying to add on to that here with 11.54 to go in the game, a third and six. And that's where Michael Osborne will bring his troops out. He's under center. He'll take the snap and hand off. No, he'll keep it himself and roll to the right side, throws to the corner of the end zone. He's got a man out there and an 
Looks like, yeah. did they get in? Touchdown, yeah. Another score. <laughs> Got a tough angle here from the yeah. booth to try to find it. But the Versailles Tigers on the strength of Michael Osborne score another touchdown, and they take a 26 to nothing lead with 11.39 to go. What an answer by Versailles there. Absolute domination right yeah. there. That, that, they were kind of get they were back on their heels, but yeah. then they said, heck with this, we're going to push this right down your throat, and that's pretty much what they did. Two passes, one for 16 and one for six, and the rest been runs. A few, few uh, face masking penalties to help help to seal the deal here. Snap is back, hold is up, or hold is good, excuse me, no and good. the kick is no good, so that'll make it 26 to nothing. Scott, I, look, I know it's week one, and I don't want to say, it's it, they've made their mistakes, but if you're for sales, they, they've been near flawless tonight, just yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, right. I, I'm impressed with defensively how they pursued to the football oh, as well. Oh, my goodness, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and Solana trying to figure it out with misdirections and quickness, but their pursuit to the ball and their discipline uh, with their defensive linemen and, and how offensively they have controlled the line of scrimmage from the start of this game until right now has just been impressive. So, I mean, <laughs> Salina is not. They're uh, 240, 225, 220, 250 up there on the front. It's not like they got, uh, they're got. they going up against 160-pound line. Right, they, right. they got some big boys up there that they're uh, pushing around pretty good. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewer-supported TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at WTLW.com and click Donate. So 11.39 to go. Danny Herbert, Scott Mag from Whole Field here at Versailles High School as Versailles scores again, and they'll kick deep to Salina. Salina tries to get back in this game. They'll catch it at about the five-yard line. They'll bring it up the middle. Ooh, nice run. As he breaks run a few hard, tackles yes. and gets to the 36-yard line, and that's where Parker Bobby Bur Morris and the Bulldogs will take over. Yeah, way to run. Parker Berkey there. Uh, no, not sorry, number eight. That's Carter Allstutter. Carter Allstutter, yeah. Yeah, he ran hard and jumping over guys and, you know, fearless. <laughs> got to be a little crazy to be on kickoff anyways but he was running hard we've had a lot of a lot of people coming up and talking to him. We had yeah. a gentleman in the booth tonight scott and he told us he's missed one game since 1958 87 years old and uh wow. shout out to that young man yeah. he was uh filling us up with all kinds of sports knowledge and a great visit absolutely it was a, <laughs> made halftime go fast it did it sure did so here comes morris and the bulldogs they'll hand the ball off go off to the right side a nice little run there as he picks up about five yards and that is number nine parker berkey who uh two carries in a row there so maybe we're going to see something different from bulldogs here yeah i think lutz kind of uh when he made that great play i think he got a little cramp and he kind of came off yeah and so i think berkey's taking lutz's spot so no, no quit in the Salina Bulldogs, down 26 to nothing as they continue to try to put something on the scoreboard. Morris is in the gun. He's got Berkey off to his left. He's going to hand the ball to Berkey as he goes up the middle. Parker Berkey picks up about four yards, and that'll bring up third and about five yards. Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams in any one of the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. The clock continues to run as we get to the 10-25 mark here in the fourth quarter, third and five from the 39-yard line. I mean, it, just the dominant of that third quarter by Versailles. You're on your second possession, and you're still. There's only 10 minutes left to go in the of, right. of the second half, and 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And I'm here to tell you what oh. a play by number 52, yeah. Alex Gilmore, 6'2", senior, just shot the gap and met the ball. Oh, oh. Could have took the ball away from him. Right, he was right there and just <laughs> blew that play up. That's going to bring up fourth and two from the 39-yard line. And it looks like Salina, no choice here, but they're yeah, going to go for it. Because, again, you kick it back, and you might not get it back. Well, yeah, that's, that's a fact. I mean, last they ran it was a 10-minute drive. It's less than 10 minutes. You might not If you give it up, you might not get it back. And Bobby Morris is in the gun. He's got two to the right, two to the left. He's got a single set back, one man in motion, and they're going to stop the play there. So Salina will take a timeout. So with 9.29 to go, the Tigers lead the Bulldogs 26-0, and we'll have the 
finale of this quarter when we come back right here on WSN. Back here at Versailles High School, Danny Hork, Scott Mag for WSN High School football. 9.29 to go in the fourth quarter. Versailles leads the line at 26 to nothing and a big fourth down play from the 44-yard line as the Bulldogs trying to keep this drive alive to get some positive momentum to end this game. Morris is in the gun. He's got two to his left. He's got a man in motion and a single receiver to the right. He's going to look down the field, drops back. Under pressure, he's going to run it himself. He's going to pick up the first down. He's got a block around in front of him and a nice gain yeah. by the junior quarterback. Good job by Morris to kind of let that play develop and then all of a sudden it's like the Red Sea had just parted right. and then he just <laughs> took off. That was a great job and he directed his full back or his running back out there to block for him. That was a heck of a play by that young man. So Bobby Morris, who, who's, who's thrown a couple interceptions tonight, continues to make some good plays and, and you see the ability of that young man to extend plays when he's under heavy pressure or things break down i really like that young man's game yeah and he'll like you said he learned from this on tape and some of those interceptions and it'll get better yeah morris is going to keep it himself as he runs off the right side tuck the ball out from the tailback and yeah. he keeps it himself and picks up about two yards yeah he Berkey thought he had it, and he did. kind of took it right out. He's like, nope, you're not getting that. <laughs> I think Bobby Morris was waiting to see what the defensive end was going to do, and then yeah. when he dropped down, he took the ball himself. Good read. So 8.38 to go here as the clock continues to run. The Tigers lead 26 to nothing. Morris is now under center. He's got a single back off to his right. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to roll off to the left side, throw back across his body, and he's got a man. Oh, and a big-time hit and an interception, and that's going to come back, Scott, because they're yeah. going to call a the personal hit, foul. Uh, the hit to a defenseless. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was number 24 for Salina, Nick Newell, and he took a vicious hit, got back up. He looks yeah. to be okay, but they're going to call that every time. Now, I don't know if they'll get the interception. Yeah, I was going to say, was the flag before the interception? I don't I don't know. The Salina coaches are way out on the field, and that's the decision here. Personal foul targeting yeah, against yeah. Versailles. And let's see what they say about the interception. After the interception. Okay, they're going to call it after the interception. It was almost a bang-bang play, yeah, Scott, it sure as was. it happened at the same time. But they're going to say the hit was after the interception. So another interception by the Versailles defense. And we haven't talked a lot about the defensive backs from Versailles, but they've been ball hawks all night. <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah. Once that ball was tipped, I'm like, uh-oh, this ain't going to be good. And it, Morris put the ball right on the money. It just went right through the receiver's hand. It just uh, tried to make a play, and unfortunately for him, he didn't get he didn't catch it. And it got popped up, and it went right into Versailles' hands. And the receiver paid the price for not catching. It. He got hit in the head. But good job by the officials from the back judge to catch that one and, and uh, throw the penalty there to cause 15 yards because you don't want anybody to get hurt. No, Absolutely. When not. you hit heads, you need your head for the rest of your life. So uh, good job by the officials. So Versailles will take over from the 15-yard line. Osborne in the gun with 8.17 to go. He's going to hand off the ball to, looks like that's number 26, Blake Henry off the left side. So he picks up about three yards. It'll make it second and seven. Clock continues to run as we come to the eight-minute mark here. Got to see one of the best players in the area last night, Scott. We had Lima Central Catholic and Shawnee, and uh, Carson Parker, the quarterback yeah. for Lima Central Catholic, is just an outstanding at. Look, that kid takes the back seat to nobody when it comes to quarterbacks in Northwest Ohio. Yeah. He is fantastic. He can run. He can throw. Yeah. He is really, really good. Yeah, and, and LCC's not bad either. No, they're, they're going to have a nice ball club <laughs> yeah. again. They got some speed and some big guys up front, and it'll be good. Osborne hands the ball off the left side. As he picks up a first down, and that is number 33 for the Cats, Aaron Bowen. That's his first carry of the night. 5'8 senior. Turns out another first down for the Versailles Tigers.
I mean, you look at these this line of defenders, and these guys these guys are going to sleep good tonight. They've been on the on the field a they lot, have, they have. a lot tonight, and they've you know get, they made a valiant effort. They just you know they a couple interceptions, and they've been put in some bad spots, but they've been playing pretty well tonight, and uh, they they've logged a lot of minutes. And Salina is going to take a timeout. We'll step aside with seven minutes to go until this one's over. You're watching high school football on WSN. Back here at Whole Field from Versailles High School, Danny Hilbert, Scott Mag, week one of the Ohio High School football. And we've had a good one here tonight from Versailles as the Tigers have dominated this one 26 to nothing over the Salina Bulldogs. Michael Osborne under center, first and 10 from the 27. He's in the I formation. He's going to hand up to the fullback, the first man through, and he's going to get a gain of maybe a yard, half a yard, right across the line of scrimmage where the Salina defense takes him down. And again, no hurry to get up to the line of scrimmage <laughs> no. and run their play and get winding out the clock here. Her sales has brought in some uh, some uh, reserves to get some uh, quality action here tonight. Yep. And they're going to replace quarterback and, here. Yep. Michael Osborne is done for the evening, and they'll bring in Ben Subler, the 5'11 junior. So he'll get to take the reins of the offense right now and get him some valuable experience. Uh, 57 shots off. That's. Um, Dominic Barga, the 6'3", 220-pound senior. Had a nice game tonight. Yes, he has. Oh, nice quarterback keeper there, and he takes it right up the middle and a big gain of about 15 yards, Scott. And there you saw Ben Subler take it right up the middle and a nice gain by that young man. Yeah, he had a little bit of uh, juice there. He's like, okay, it's my turn. <laughs> Sitting on the sidelines too long. I'm, I got a lot of energy. That keeps that clock running as we're under the six-minute mark. Sales continues to dominate this one, 26 to nothing. You got to find the positive for Salina. What do you tell your kids after this one, Scott, to keep them, keep their heads up and encourage yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. It's you got to go back on film and you got to look and learn from some of your mistakes that you made. And you know, I, I don't know if there was that many. It's just a few costly. You just ran right. into a team that was disciplined and did everything that they needed to do to win tonight. There's Aaron Bowen as he goes across for a gain of about seven yards. That'll bring up second and three or second and four maybe. And they didn't do anything flashy, right? You know, no, they, right. They, no, had, no, right. they had the new car, but they still they still did. They Just still put gas in and ran it. Yeah, and they <laughs> ran the ball and they ran the ball and, and uh, those guys up front uh, were very, very good tonight. And that's, I think, maybe that's what you approach if you're the Salina that we just got beat up offensively uh, up front and you know that offensively and defensively so we got to get a little bit better on the line and so we got to get our athletes in space to make some plays and we didn't really have much time and the ball off to the first man up the middle and gain of about four or five yards and almost gets close to the first down let's see if he gets across the first down marker and they'll mark that one short Gonna keep the clock running at 435 here in county. So a terrific effort tonight by the Versailles Tigers as they will go to 1-0. Salina will fall to 0-1. And, and they've both got a uh, big league uh, slate coming up this year as the, the Mac and WBL perennially two top powers in Northwest Ohio. Yeah, it's not like either one of these two teams are playing in any yeah. slouch leagues. That, <laughs> you know, every week they got a pretty tough opponent, so... Uh, this is a good match for both these teams to play this quality opponents. Timeout. Timeout. Timeout with 4.05 to go. We'll step aside our last timeout of the evening. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Versailles High School. We're with 4.05 to go. The Tigers lead the Bulldogs 26 to nothing. We're at third and three. Uh, Subler is in the gun at the 50-yard line. He's got a man in motion. He's faked the handoff and bring it right up the middle. And uh, he's going to be, oh boy, he's going to be close to a first down. Let's Ball see where they mark yeah. it. Yeah. But it looks like the 49. officials are going to mark it short. About two yards short. So they will punt the ball away with 3.49 to go, and the clock continues to run. Salina will get another chance to try to put some points on the scoreboard. And take a 
taking their time with that play clock. They'll run it all the way down, which I don't blame them for that. A little high snap, but he does a nice job of crowning and gets it off the side of his foot and will go to the right side and will go out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. And that's where Salina will take over with 3.17 to go. A bunch of new faces coming out here. Looks like uh, <laughs> JV or the second team units coming out here for Versailles anyhow. Wholesale changes looks like maybe for yep. both teams. And it's good. They deserve some time. Like I said, they put their time in the summer camp and dog days of August. Scott, next week, uh, WSN and myself will be down at Coldwater for the big showdown between Bell Fountain with Ohio State commit Tavion St. Clair taking the Chieftains down to Coldwater to take on the Cavaliers in a big non-league matchup. Yeah, you might have to buy yourself 50-50 ticket, <laughs> yeah, right, maybe. Right. That'll be a huge crowd. Yeah, We're pretty be, excited about that. Much, standing right? room only around the, around the uh, track, won't there be? Yeah, absolutely. Mark Shine and I will be on the call for that game, so super excited to bring that into your living rooms, everybody. So Salina is going to take another timeout here with 3.17 to go. And boy, we jinked ourselves when yeah, we, right. we said that we, this game was flying along, but... Uh, uh, you know, the Salina coaches are coaching them up, and they want these kids to understand how important this is. And uh, I like to see that, uh, you know, down 26 to nothing, but these coaches are really working hard. Yeah, and what they're doing is they're coaching a lot of the uh, second, you know, the guys that are on the second team, right, because you're yeah. one injury away of playing, and Absolutely. why not coach them up to, to get them where they need to be for the for the next game maybe because the guy that's in front of you, you're one – one hit away from getting in, so <laughs> we've seen some vicious hits tonight. Right, <laughs> we so sure have. both coaches are using the coach of their teams, and you know that's I've never been a argument about this. New quarterback in the game for Salina, number twelve, looks like Cohen Harder, five eight sophomore, leading the charge here for the Bulldogs. So he'll take the snap, hand the ball off over to number five. Hey, Kassan made some good plays on uh, defense. Yes, he has. And special teams. We'll keep the clock running as we're under the three-minute mark here. Second and ten from the 30-yard line. Give these guys credit over there on the deck. They're still out there watching. <laughs> they are <laughs> all the way on. Yeah. They've stood out there all night. So not, not a bad night weather-wise to be out there with your buddies. Right. <laughs> so second and 10 from the 30. Quarterback will keep it and run up the middle, and he'll take a loss there. It's nice job by the Versailles interior line there as they penetrated and took him down for no gain at all. That'll bring up about third and 10 with 2.20 to go here until this one's wrapped up. Yeah. Some more guys getting in. It's kind of nice to see. They're trying to get as many guys in, get their Friday Night Lights experience. So. Absolutely. Also, moms and dads like to see their sons get out there and get playing. And a lot of moms and dads here tonight. Yes, we had sir. a huge crowd. Yes. Both fans are both stands pretty full tonight. So realize that from where we had a park. You <laughs> got lucky. You <laughs> I got, got close. Lucky. And I, got a, I got a good spot. Yeah, I got a half mile walk to get to my car. Ooh, uh, trying to make a play. Did he? Catch he that? intercepted it. Wow, nice. what a play. Yeah. What a diving catch. <laughs> Holy cow. Try to see who that is. As he's got the ball. He's going to keep it himself yeah. there. That is, let's see the number on that player as he comes close. 72? 72 wow. for Versailles. That is Caden Starkey, the 5'8 junior with a sensational catch. That is, in my count, that's four interceptions that tonight for Versailles. Yeah. Now, so that one was he laid out. That's a diving catch. That's not, you know, 72 is like a defensive lineman <laughs> number. So that, that young man's got some hands for a defensive lineman. Fantastic job by that young man. Unless he sales. played uh, linebacker, but what a play that was. The sales will just run the clock out here with 147 to go. They'll take a knee. They'll do that a couple times, and we'll wrap this one up. So, Scott, let's surmise this whole night tonight for the Versailles uh, Tigers. I, I, I can't see. The only thing that they uh, didn't do well tonight is their, their special teams <laughs> right. or their, their, uh, you know, their extra point attempt. One was a bad snap, and the other one hit the side of the thing. But I think they're impressed with the way they pursued the ball, the way they uh, were physical up front. Uh, 
couple times they got they you know got burned by the misdirection so that's again they'll see that on tape and they'll be able to coach that one up but I, I think they're going to see a lot more than that because as we talked about it through this broadcast is I've been impressed of how well Versailles pursues to the football. Sure. I mean, I, there's some offensive guy that's going to know a heck of a lot more about football than I do that's going to be able to figure out some misdirection thing. So I think if you do take away one thing that they can learn from is they got to maybe get on their keys. And, and, and I did notice a couple times in the third quarter that defensive end kind of stayed. Even he didn't pursue, he stayed. And, and tried to make him play and forced it back inside, but was not didn't have enough friends there to help him out. And for Salina, they'll fall to 0-1. And, and disappointing opening night for them. They'll lose this one 26 to nothing, but it, there are some positives. Yeah, absolutely. It, a couple couple key interceptions, a couple good plays. I think what happened was that that big kickoff return right at the start, and then, the, then right after that was that huge punt return, and then they kind of struggled early offensively and didn't get it going until about halfway through that second quarter and then that third quarter but if you only get one possession a quarter it's tough to come away with points so that'll do it from whole field here at Versailles High School as the Versailles Tigers win their week one matchup with the Salina Bulldogs 26 to nothing for Scott Mag and our entire WOSN crew I'm Danny Holbrook saying we'll see you down the road